The Spirit of God is hovering over the surface of the waters, and yet God is still wherever he was when he was um, creating heavens and the earth. He's still in the heavens, as it were, and yet his Spirit is now going out from him and doing this creative work of hovering over the surface of the waters and beginning to work its magic, as it were. The Spirit of God, in concert with the Word of God, who we later on know to be um, the eternal Word, the Logos, Yeshua, uh, pre-incarnate. Right. So that's kind of what's going on is as we begin to continue to read down through the rest of the Bible, the biblical writers didn't have any problem realizing that God actually is moving his spirit from himself onto people or within people. And so now the spirit can become localized in those those um, those um, of uh, near closer uh, locations, those those earthly locations instead of always being confined to the heavens where God himself dwells. So just like I said, like Yeshua breathed on the apostles and the Holy Spirit came upon them. And in that, in similar to my analogy of breathing into the balloon, Yeshua probably went through the motions. He probably, you know, breathed out onto the apostles. I mean, if I take it at face value, it says he breathed on them. And yet we're to understand that there's this impartation of the Spirit of God upon them as it's demonstrated in this localized action of him breathing upon them. He's trying to almost say to them, look, I'm taking the Spirit which is in me and I'm pushing it into you. It's going from where I'm at and I'm not losing any of it, but you are gaining part of it. So now he's going to live within you and dwell within you. And I'm going to go back and be with the Father at the right hand. And I'm going to be up in heaven. But you are going to continue to have this spirit in you right here on planet Earth. So that now the spirit is where I'm at and he's where you're at. Right? Not having this philosophical discussion about the spirit is everywhere at the same time. Right? Is there anywhere where God isn't? The answer is no. Thus, if God is pure spirit, is there anywhere in the universe where God isn't? No. So God's spirit is everywhere as well. And yet at the same time, we don't have any um, uh, argument, any uh, difficulty understanding that God's spirit can localize, can be in point A and point B and move from here to there. And the same thing happens with the wind. I can walk outside my door and there could be wind right at, right at my door. And yet 20, 30 feet down the road in front of me, there might be no wind or vice versa. I could look across the street and see the wind blowing the trees but I might not feel it right where I'm at. How is this possible? Because the wind can blow here and there, and it can be everywhere, and it can be only in point A and point B. It's like the wind. It's like the spirit. It's like the breath. It can be in in two different places and more than one place, and it can be absent from from one place, as it were. That's this kind of uh, beginning of this discussion of first person and third person. God can dispatch his spirit. God can dispatch his eternal word. All right, we spent a lot of time there. So let's read this uh, uh, second paragraph in my commentary. I say the word that's translated as hovered in our verse uh, two of chapter one is merachefet. And the root word is rachaf. And I say in my commentary that it actually conveys a sense of shaking or moving or fluttering, right? And if I were to click on the, uh, the footnote there, 49, um, the link there will probably take me to the uh, the lexicon source that I pulled this resource, this info from, and the description in the in the um, lexicon about this particular action that the spirit is undertaking is this: um, the action is actually as when a bird softly relaxes its flight to alight upon its young, and it actually it adequately describes the actions of the ruach, the spirit. I say, as he lovingly and closely watches over the created substance. How so? Well, this verb, as we find, although found three times in Scripture, is defined as hovering only one other time in the entire Tanakh. So it's a, it's not a very widely used word, but it's interesting that that the Holy Spirit inspired Moses to use this word hovering when it talks about the Holy Spirit because of the loving picture that it paints. So let's look at that real quick. Let's use that uh, reference in the Tanakh where this word is found the only other time. Uh, it translated as hovering. Quote, he found his people in desert country in a howling, wasted wilderness. This is speaking of God, right? Um, he protected him and cared for him, guarded him like the pupil of his eye. Ready for this? Like an eagle that stirs up her nest, 
hovers, there's our word marachefet, rachaf, like an eagle that stirs up her nest, hovers over her young, spreads out her wings, takes them, and carries them as she flies. So the reference uh, of this passage is from Deuteronomy chapter 32, verses 10 and 11. And so um, it's a beautiful verse. 